Nadia Marie Romanos is a business intelligence analyst at Health Trust, which is part of the HCA family. In the past 18 months during her tenure as a Toastmaster, she has served as secretary and is fulfilling her position as vice president of membership and sergeant at arms for HCA Artful Articulators, as well as Area 50 Director for Division E here in District 63. She is also a member of C Division Advanced Speakers in District 62. A resident of Nashville, she has lived in Tennessee's capital for almost three years. Today, she will share some of the trials she had in moving here at age 24 by herself. You'll also hear a few of the lessons she learned along the way that may help those of us that are struggling with the pandemic. Please welcome Nadia Romanos. Thank you so much, Stephen. Before I begin discussing some of my life journey, I'd like to ask a couple of reflective questions for the audience. Just for clarification, I'm not actually asking for you to say them out loud or in the chat. But if you'd like to, feel free. Think of this as a reflection exercise to take for my speech. The first question, how much do you earn a day? No, I'm not actually too curious what you're making. But if you're employed, whether salaried or hourly, I'm sure when you're working, you do the math and you think to yourself, wow, I made such and such per day. Now let me ask my second question, which really gets to the heart of my speech today. How much do you need to live per day? I'm not talking about saving money for your retirement or keeping money in the bank so you can go on a big vacation at the end of the quarantine. I'm talking how much do you need each day to cover your living costs and to be comfortable. The reason why I ask that question of all of you is that was a question that was constantly in my mind three years ago. It's no secret that the quarantine and pandemic has been a very hard time for all of us here. Maybe some of your problems have been financial. Many people I know either lost their jobs or were furloughed. Maybe some of the problems you've had have been mental. A lot of people have suffered mentally from not being able to socialize with those that they're very close to. Lastly, Maybe you got caught COVID or maybe you lost someone. I'm not going to recommend a one size fits all remedy for you, but I'm going to discuss some of the hardships that as Steven mentioned, I had when I moved here. And maybe you'll be inspired and I'll try to offer some takeaways for you that I learned the hard way. Let's go back to May, 2018. I am 24 a master's student at Vanderbilt, and I just moved to Tennessee by myself. I had no relatives in the state, and I knew things were going to be difficult. I translocated almost a thousand miles all the way from Connecticut with everything I brought packed into my 2004 Acro sedan. I knew that my prospects were a little bit limited. And for context, I moved from Connecticut, whose job market was utterly terrible. Did you know in the latter half of 2017, Connecticut lost more than 15,000 jobs? I falsely assumed when I came down here that, oh, the rest of the country is also going through a downward spiral. 
I actually was not able to secure a job due to the employment circumstances in Connecticut for nine months. Why do I mention all of this? I accepted a job at Vanderbilt Recreation and Wellness Center. And I was happy because I figured at least let me get my foot through the door and we'll see what opportunities arise. Now, feel free to put in the chat the answer to the question that I am about to ask. How much do you think I was making an hour? No guesses? 15, wow, 950. Seven, Tanya, oh, we have a couple 775s. For context, I'm in Nashville, which is in Tennessee. And if you're not aware, Tennessee uses the federal minimum wage. When I applied, I did not know what the pay was going to be, and they did not mention it until the end of the interview. I was offered $8.25 an hour. Let me repeat that again, $8.25 an hour. I took it. Keep in mind, I already had employment history considering I worked at Albany Medical Center under an SVP, and I already had my bachelor's. None of that experience mattered, and that was what I was offered. That's what I was accepted. I knew things were going to be tough, but I said to myself, that's what it is. I'll have to make it. If that wasn't bad enough, my start date was actually postponed by almost two weeks due to paperwork and orientation. When I finally got my first check, it was $423, and that was after taxes were removed. For context, my rent was $700, including utilities. That was the majority of my net pay every single month. All bills came after that. I allocated a five mile daily driving allowance to go to the bus commuter lot. My car used approximately a gallon per return, return trip to Vanderbilt campus. That was money I could not spare. Despite taking the bus, I still was using actually a gallon of gas per month. And even that irritated me. For groceries, I gave myself a budget of $10 a week. Some of you probably don't know me, and you may be thinking I'm making these numbers up. But people who have worked with me, who have known me very well, knew I was not joking. Just for context, I couldn't even afford to take food out. And the only thing I did for entertainment in that time was going to national sounds games because my academic department would sometimes have free tickets. After paying my second month of rent, I had $300 in my checking account. A week went by and then my car started having its first issue here in Tennessee. My muffler pipe, as I later found out, needed to be soldered. And I did not know how much it was gonna cost and I considered just not fixing it until maybe the next month. After five days, I took it to the shop where I later learned it was only going to be $120. I breathe, I breathe a sigh of relief, realizing I can pay rent for August and June or July. I said to myself, I'm going to make it. 
if my financial troubles weren't enough, I then had something I wasn't ever expecting occur. I used to call my parents every single week to reassure them I wasn't kidnapped or murdered or whatever on the bus. It was really one of my few opportunities to vent about my situation. I was actually at work on a Saturday in July when my mother called me during my shift and she said she had to talk to me. She assured me it was serious. And when she initially told me, I kid you not, I started laughing because I thought she was joking. She informed me that she and my father got into disagreement the night before. The police got involved and she had to stay at my sister's house so neither of them were arrested. After 45 years of marriage, she made the decision that she was going to be filing for divorce. I was already financially independent and had been since 22. But whatever emergency funds that I may have thought of asking for vanished. Assets had to be tracked for divorce court, and I knew I was really on my own. Despite all that, I said to myself, I'm going to make it. Things proceed, and now it's August 2018. I can't say it's necessarily been the most fun three months of my life. In fact, it was definitely the hardest. But everything changed when I was on my shift and the undergraduate students started discussing a student employment portal. This was the first time I ever heard of that. And because I'm the, I was in the School of Medicine, they never sent any of that information over. I asked some questions to get some clarification and then I realized, oh, I have access to that too. I went that weekend and decided to apply for some internships, which is really what I was looking for when I wanted to move here. I applied at 12, 11 a.m. on a Monday. When do you think I got my response back? 11 hours later, they informed me Oh, we're actually about to conclude our interviews, but we can sneak you in for the next day. You bet your bottom dollar, I made sure I was available. During that interview, I tried to speak to the best of my capabilities of why I should be accepted as a business operations intern. Towards the end, the interviewer asked, Oh, I see that you have some coding skills. Do you want to talk to me about that? I'm not a computer science major, and my coding skills were tinkering in HTML when I was at Albany Med. But hey, I did some coding, if you will, in Liteca, and I figured I might as well give it a shot. She told me that another part, department in IT was actually hiring interns, and that she was more than happy to forward my interview. A couple of hours later, I get a call from the direct, one of the directors at IT, and he asked me to come in that Friday. I came in, and I kid you not, they never sent me what the position was, so I, I went through the whole interview having no idea what I actually was even being <laughs> applied for. Towards the end, they asked me, well, what do you think of the job description? I had to confess, I have no idea what the job is. Apparently, I was referenced for a cloud engineer intern. I was also one of two non-computer science majors that applied that semester. My resume was forwarded to the cloud team on August 28th. A week later, I received my acceptance. Both of the non-computer science majors got the positions. 
in hindsight, I'm not telling you all these things to brag about my life. It was really a miserable time for me, and I would not wish what I had to endure on anyone. The reason why I tell you all these things is I'm sure there are things that you're not happy about, such as maybe not being able to see family in certain states or not being thrilled about the job market here in Tennessee or just in general. Some lessons that I learned, I'm going to try to share, and if they're not applicable, that's okay. Thank you, Kristen. First and foremost, I will admit I was an economics major in undergrad, so this really speaks to the heart of me. Make sure you budget. I'm not going to tell you to balance your checkbook because, let's be real, half the time people aren't even using checkbooks or they're using pen PayPal. But I will always advocate for living within your means. Maybe your means have shrunk since the start of COVID, or maybe you're having to, say, relocate because you can't afford your rent anymore. Whatever it is, I would always suggest just try to get through it to the best of your capability, because when you do your best, you can't be ashamed of what you did. You go to sleep with a calm mind and you can rest reassured, I did what I could. My second takeaway, and this is one I, I assure you, I never thought I would be advocating three years ago. Take time for yourself. I'm from Connecticut and I am definitely a go-getter, but probably to the shock of everyone on my team, I have actually started advocating mindfulness. Maybe you're not sure where to start with that, but one app that I can recommend is Headspace. And if you don't want to use any apps and you're old school like me, just a simple journal to jot down some of your daily thoughts to keep you reassured. You know, when I used to take the bus and my commute was two and a half hours, you know what I'd be doing throughout that time? I'd be working. And if I wasn't working, I was writing down my to-do list and writing daily reflections of what I need to get done and where my progress is. If writing or typing is not your thing, then I would suggest getting outdoors. I'm cognizant that maybe some of you are not comfortable being outside or you haven't been vaccinated yet. But even last year when COVID was really starting to affect me, I actually went to Shelby Bottom Park multiple times just to get a sense of balance and to clean my head of negative space. Third, I would recommend to stay positive. I don't know if you've seen some of the news, but at least if you're in Nashville, you should be really excited. Sure, traffic's going to pick up again, which may not be the best, but if you've been paying attention, you would have noticed just last week, Amazon signed its second lease for a tower here in Nashville. I would know it's only going to be two blocks from my office. On top of that, Oracle signed a deal for a whole new campus in the city. The Nashville Business Journal last week alone announced $3.8 billion in economic investment, which will lead to 10,000 new jobs. Even if you're not in Nashville, I assure you, the economy is recovering. In fact, unemployment is going downward. And I just checked today to make sure. If you're still employed, think about it this way. Did you know that in 2020, there were more home buyers than in 2019? 
I can say I contributed that to that statistic because I got my first property in July. In conclusion, I really hope that all of you have felt some kind of motivation during my speech today. And maybe you'll have some new takeaway to get you yourself situated as you move forward. Before I go, I just want to reassure you, take time for yourself and remember, you will make it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadia, for sharing those incredible stories and those experiences and for, for sharing the thing that you learned because we certainly can learn from those experiences and what you learned as well. So thank you for, for sharing those stories.